welcome you all. Welcome all of you. Um, we're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. And what I'll do is we'll start with a pledge to our flag and a moment of prayer. And if you have a phone, if you'd be so kind as just to check it, please. You know, people, I don't know if we remember for very many things, but I, I um, always try to remind people at the beginning of a meeting, if you would, to silence your phone. Um, or leave it in your car. Your choice. Uh, no penalty. Nobody gets arrested if it goes off. We appreciate that, too. Um, but if you would, let's go ahead and stand. We'll have our pledge and a moment for get started here. <coughs> County is, a, is an agricultural county. We appreciate the need for rain. Uh, many of us are on wells, and, uh, and I'm grateful, and I've said it before, Lord, that I'm, I'm proud that we're not responsible for that. But if it be your will, Lord, uh, we would love to see the ground dry a little bit and absorb some of this water as a county interest. I pray, Lord, that anything that's accomplished here tonight uh, that we'll always try to make it glorifying to you that you'd be proud of it. Watch over us as we leave here. Forgive us of our many sins. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. <clears throat> you all right, out of the way already. Sorry. We'll start the uh, uh, our first order of business is to actually approve the minutes from two meetings. We'll separate these. Uh, we had all members present for the January 27th meeting, our regular business meeting. So with that, I'll open the floor, entertain a motion to approve those as they're submitted. So moved. Motion to approve. Second. And a second. Any comments or questions on those? Chair, they're, they're separate. These are separate. Uh, they're, all, all are present during the first meeting. We'll, we'll uh, do the second one here. Uh, uh, there you go. Ona, Commissioner Allen. Ona of Deutsch. But, uh, cool. All right, so the first one, we have a motion and a second. Any, uh, no comments? Uh, we'll start uh, with Commissioner Allen on this one. Yes. 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 Okay. And I'm sorry I was remiss in mentioning that Commissioner Kirk is under the weather tonight, so we'll be uh, four commissioners here tonight. The second set of minutes was for the February 3rd meeting, and Commissioner Allen was uh, absent on that one, so um, vote accordingly, and we'll entertain a motion to approve those as they were submitted. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions on those? Yes, sir. On item number 10, discuss amending the purchasing policy. The last sentence of the amendments talk about the amendments were discussed and will be presented. The amendments, I don't remember amendments being discussed. I just remember that we would be for receiving those amendments. Right. I think we made a, a, a broad statement to that, just suggesting that we were going to address some of the spending levels or the thresholds. So, so uh, perhaps we didn't talk very specifically about it. Um, all of you have received uh, that in, in, a, in a packet or whatever sent out. And we did a little housekeeping as we removed some of the reference to particular banks being involved and things of that nature. So, um, but uh, um, I certainly know that <coughs> if we need to uh, uh, approve that with, let's see, a strike through, let me get to it, Jenny, but I had a 10. Uh, present changes also. Um, how about the amendments were mentioned? Tell me how to word it. What, what, what would make it uh, 
representative of what you were calling that because uh, we there there were only there truly was there were two substantive changes to that and we'll get into it in a minute when we get to that item but the two substantive changes were the thresholds we're going to change for the, uh, the the actions taken by the board or by the county when we go out for these um, services or, or uh, purchases and the other was some inclusion of uh, exemptions as, as it turns out that have not been present or weren't in our existing documents so those were the two substantive changes in that policy um, and, and again with the policy that or with the <coughs> document that was sent to the commissioners for consideration those are listed are listed in, in their entirety on that and we'll certainly change the minutes to reflect the, the whatever we need it to say I'll, I'll wait for that though. You tell me what it needs to say. You turned the table on in there, Commissioner. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I've got that. Listen. No, I, 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 I'm not. I'm I just not think the way it read felt like it, there was something more okay. final that was presented, and I wanted to make sure the minutes were clear that you know it was general discussion and we didn't have anything to look at that night. Okay. For clarity. Okay. Um, there was general discussion. So, with that uh, suggestion, would, would the commissioners be uh, uh, averse to making that change? The amendments were. What's that? Come in my motion. Did I need to? Please, please uh, um, yes, you do. Okay. To amend the motion to approve <coughs> with the additional wording on the. Uh, uh, to be general conversation. Yeah, those items under item number 10, the general discussion was held. And that items would be presented for consideration at the next meeting. So good. I Second. Have, thank you very much. All right, and that, is that I, and I I, I I have no problem changing that. I think that's that's good. It was uh, sometimes it's a um, it's a bit of an exercise to capture what is actually said in real time, and uh, so. Any other comments on this? All right, with that, then we'll vote to approve those with those changes we just mentioned on item 10. Commissioner Strickland. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. <coughs> All right. For those of you who may not have been here, that was interesting. <laughs> but it was necessary. Okay. Folks, we have uh, tonight, I have a uh, uh, Miss Jennifer Ivey with the County Library, and uh, she has our, uh, is it a quarterly report? Yes, sir. Thank you. Come on forward, Jennifer. All right. Thank you for putting on the agenda for tonight. Um, I have uh, distributed my report and some other papers that are all stapled together for you all to have. So I'm going to go over the highlights from my quarter of 2019 for for our adult programming, we had 66 programs with 523 in attendance. We had several author visits last quarter for the adult programming. Two in October, which are pictured there on the bottom of your first page, and then one in November. In November, we also had uh, hosted our Veterans Day coffee again. We had the most uh, attendance that we've ever had for that. Several of our elected officials were there. Uh, those who showed up, and thanks for your service. Um, I don't have any pictures of this, but <clears throat> three of us walked over to the Senior Center on December 19th and led a Christmas caroling sing-along. I believe there are pictures of that on the Senior Center's Facebook page, so <laughs> for a good time, go look at that. Um, the Veterans Day pictures are on the, the back page of that, so we can see all of our um, the attendance that we have for that. And then for youth programming, we have 141 programs with uh, about 3,300 in attendance. 69 of our youth programs were outside the building at uh, daycare centers, uh, schools, Head Start, um, talking about library stuff or doing story times. Um, we had a Thanksgiving movie with a craft, which was very well attended. Um, Saturday programs, it's hard to tell, but um, it rained that day, so everybody came to the library. And that picture's on the back side of that page, people, uh, kids making their turkeys and watching Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. Um, I want to mention the other news where it says staff training. I had um, 
a day with the heritage librarian in Athens who came out to our ranch and worked with me in our genealogy room and kind of gave me the lowdown on how to handle donated genealogy material. So I've had some training in that now. And on the back page we have a Santa photo. We've had the same Santa for three or four years. The animal shelter also brought some adoptable puppies to that event, so you could have, uh, you see Santa Claus and Santa Paul's, so you can collect some dogs. And then I just want to point out how my section under love notes from patrons is very long. People have been telling us lots of stuff. The next thing I have in your packet, the pink sheet of paper, is our year in review for 2019. So this is all of our stats um, for the whole year of 2019. Um, at the top, the most popular items checked out, there's some pictures, but the top um, circulating item from our branch is the Georgia State Park Pass, which is great because that means people are using them, and I definitely want to uh, promote that partnership, but there's still people who don't know that we have park passes. So, now all of y'all know this now, too, so I'm glad everybody's here tonight for this. Um, we had over 81,000 visits to the library in 2019. Um, 323 library cards issued. If anybody does not have a library card, come see me tomorrow or anytime next week. Um, over 75,000 <coughs> checked out, over 700 programs offered, and of those programs, 14,000 people came to library programs last year. Um, so we stay busy, and um, and this page is sort of how we, how we prove our relevance. Um, over 52,000 reference questions, and when I say reference question, that's anything from where's the bathroom to where's the requirement to what's the last book that James Patterson wrote, um, how do I print this, stuff like that. 17,000 computer sessions, that means people coming in and using the computers, not the classes, but just using the computers. So there's definitely a need for um, for internet access at the library for those who don't have it at home. And almost 800 volunteer hours, we've got a great uh, group of volunteers at the library. The last thing is the National Library Week proclamation. National Library Week is April 19th through the 25th. And last year we asked y'all to honor the library with a proclamation and present that at your meeting um, as close to National Library Week as possible. I'm going to ask y'all to do that again if y'all uh, would agree. And I can send this to you electronically if you need to edit anything down. This is just sort of a sample that I wrote up about the highlights from the year. And the March calendar is the last thing. The Greenpeace paper is our March calendar. The big thing in March is the Friends of the Library book sale. You need books for a dollar or two dollars. Um, come to the library at March 6th through 14th. If you're already a Friends member, you can come to the preview sale on the 5th from 5 to 8. Uh, Friends membership is $10 a year, and all the money comes right back into the library to put books on the shelves for people to check out. Do y'all have any questions about my report or upcoming events? Yeah, the um, Board of Elections. We had, um, I thought it was kind of a low turnout, maybe 15 people came to that, but it did give everybody time to actually try out the machines. And I know that she had done that in several places, so some people had gone to other places, but, um, but people were happy to have it. And everybody got to try it out. Any other questions? So, so you actually tabulate how many people ask where the bathroom is? Um, it's a formula based on how many people walk in the door. I don't care. Those are impressive numbers. Just any questions. So. Uh, <coughs> sure appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm happy to have the opportunity. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good. Let's we'll get right on down to item four, which is statements and remarks from citizens on any agenda item. We have four agenda items here tonight. Um, we have consider amending our purchasing policy. We have consider appointing Robin Purcell to the Recreation Board. We have consider purchasing a new backhoe out of the uh, Road Department Sploss Fund. And then lastly, consider resolution to address environmental concerns of, of material use uh, or processing of creosote based products. So what uh, we'll do at this point is I'll open the floor for those that would like to speak on any of those four items. And uh, I'll ask that uh, we recognize a reasonable amount of time to speak uh, on each of those items, about three minutes if you would. My name is that working? 
I'm Ruth Ann Tosanovich. I live at 959 Highway 172 Culvert. And I was going to ask you to pass a resolution in support of House Bill 857, which would ban the burning of creosote railroad ties statewide. And I see that you are perhaps going to do this. So I thank you very much for that. And it's certainly a step in the right direction. And um, hopefully we'll, the concerned citizens will be able to work with you some more on other issues, but this is fabulous. Um, I want to point out that there are a couple other um, reps that have signed on to the bill as sponsors. Uh, Robert Trammell from District 132 and Spencer Fry from District 118, and he's like right in the Athens area. Um, the other thing I want to do is act if, if, you, if the resolution passes, I would ask that you forward it to all of the sponsors of the bill, um, to our Senator Frank Ginn, and to the House Committee that the bill is assigned to, which is Natural Resources and Environment. Um, it's really important to get the bill out of the committee. So um, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Anybody else tonight? Uh, my name is Greg Osanovich. I live at 959 I also just want to thank the board for this resolution that you're hopefully going to pass tonight. And uh, what I'd like to do is take copies of it. We're going to do a conservation day at the Capitol on Wednesday, and we might have an opportunity to pass this resolution out, which would show other representatives that are there that this county supports this bill, which is an important bill not only for here, but for the whole state of Georgia. Georgia is slowly becoming a place where people are looking at it as a way to do things that other states don't allow, and I think this is a step in the right direction, not only for the county, but for the whole state. So, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Ward 1709 Wagner's Grove Church Road, Calvert, Georgia. I want to say thank you very much. I sent a very uh, misunderstood email, I believe, a month ago. Um, but I do want to say thank you so much for spending the time to research and come back with support for what we are trying to do here. And I do have one request, and that is that maybe we can all work together toward um, developing ordinances that will protect the residents in the, in this area that is now the new industrial corridor so that we might have an avenue um, to protect ourselves against um, just everything that we've been running across with this. Um, currently it looks like a city is in my backyard so now I'm what's with all the lights and maybe if if we're going to bring new industry in, and I see this as a wonderful opportunity for our county, 
hey, maybe we need to be a little more proactive and think forward to what can we do to protect our county while we're bringing this all in. And I appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Consider amending our purchasing policy, and our commissioners do have, in fact, the uh, uh, copy of what was suggested. It's a, a template, it's a work in progress. Um, I met with the uh, county attorney. We actually did try to uh, look and address some of the items and found that some things were not included, um, as you'll see in the uh, Section 2-246, we added uh, from item 5, yeah, item 5 to 10 were, were exemptions that were added. Um, we do these routinely. I think it's a, um, a um, necessary action that we actually identify what our policy is on those items. Though. So. Um, you have those in front of you, and I'll open the floor for a motion to approve or disapprove, um, and then discussion that would follow that. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to, to postpone it for a month, unless there's some emergency that we need, need tonight. Um, I probably didn't have as much time as I prefer to do my own research and dialogue and then the, in one particular question I had and then, <coughs> uh, maybe I need to wait to see what here but uh, the question I had and I'll put it out there was that I noticed it talks about um, seal proposals to add around for two weeks and I think that Georgia procurement law might require a full week minimum and some specificity to when those ads are run so I just want to be clear before we take any action on some items that if, if we need to take another quick look at it, if there's no pending emergency situation, we need to take care of it. And maybe they give me a chance to um, develop a few more questions that may be beneficial to the rest of the board. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll defer to uh, our, our attorney on the, on the question about the, the amount of time that it requires to run. Uh, I know that over a certain threshold we need to register or we need to list this with a um, state registry. Okay. Right, yeah, there's that listing with the state procurement registry. Um, but other than that, I think what Commissioner Donster is talking about is other work construction law, so that only applies in those, you know, there's two two instances where state law applies, and I think you explained this last time we met, it's roads over 20,000 and any other construction work over 100,000, and that's where you get into those specific requirements. Uh, everything else in here other than the little attack on of, of the registered on the website, state website, over a certain threshold. It was just purely internal. Um, and while I've got the, the microphone, <laughs> I want to point out too. So there's two things really uh, that you might want to think about here. This purchasing policy is about, you know, what process you use for certain <coughs> contracts at certain thresholds. Um, but as far as who approves it, you're still working under your 1965 charter provision that says everything over $100 has to be approved by the board. That's something that you could amend, I'm pretty sure, by a home rule and not have to go through the, the General Assembly to do it. So, um, you know, you might want to get at least up to the end of the 20th century, if not all the way into the 21st, on that one as well. <laughs> so, um, but having said that, then I, then perhaps, uh, and to my knowledge, right now there's nothing pending. This is we're not trying to to put this in place to be able to make a purchase or a, a, a service agreement. This was a matter of um, practicality, trying to just uh, update it. So, if need be, we can go back and look to uh, also by by home rule if that's the the. the vehicle that you choose to use, we can amend that, um, that policy as well. 
So, so right now, I have a mo motion on the floor to, to postpone um, this item until, is it a month? Is that a A month of plenty of time for me to make any further comments or suggestions or comments back to the, the rest of the board and then okay. maybe that'll give the attorney, the attorney time to double check my Yes, sir. All right, I'll, I'll second that. So I have a second. Now. Any other questions on that? Right, and, and, and part of that uh, um, is, 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 as Mike has mentioned, though, that um, home rule change. We're, we're looking, uh, again, a lot of this policy is how we operate internally. The state has uh, overarching requirements. Um, this establishes thresholds, it, it actually establishes um, uh, exemptions, as you can see. And, uh, but it, in general, for a purchase over $100, you stop and think about in 2020 how difficult, how many things that you buy or that you need to contract fall below $100. It is problematic. It is problematic. So, so I would, I would, I would, yes, I would encourage you to include both of those at that time. So the motion in the second is to postpone this till next month. Is there any other comment or question on that? Yes, sir. Commissioner Betts? Yes. 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 There we go. Next item is to consider appointing Robin Purcell to the Recreation Board. I will uh, uh, yield forward to Commissioner Bettis if you'd like to make any comments. Well, I think um, at the, I did at the last meeting, just a local resident has a daughter involved in the program, um, the recreation department. I believe her son has been involved, but just as eager to serve and very interested in helping out and serving on the board. Okay. Well, we'll oh, entertain a motion then to appoint. Rob herself to the Recreation Board. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions or comments or further discussion on that item? Commissioner Dolster. Yes. 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 All right. <clears throat> okay. Next item is to consider purchasing a uh, new piece of equipment, a backhoe out of the uh, road department supply sponge, you have in front of you the uh, contract that was proposed. There were questions that were raised last month, which uh, uh, were good questions. In about mid-page there, you'll see the age of the two pieces that were considered to either trade in, to repair, do whatever. Um, I ask, and there are extensive repairs and issues uh, regarding expense and the utility with these both of these items. And while they uh, recognize you know, the value in having perhaps an additional, we do have, in addition to these, we do have a, a, uh, uh, a backhoe already in service other than these. These two have, um, effectively reach the end of life cycle and the quote for the balance of that was $84,855,000 and uh, again we've gone back and looked at the uh, question regarding a warranty this one has a not a one year not a two year it has a 48 month warranty included in that price so, um, I don't know more, what more I could add to that other than it is uh, certainly a high use piece of equipment in this county. With that, I'll entertain uh, a motion uh, for your desire on that. So, and a second to uh, approve the purchase for this. 
uh, and this is to be purchased out of the uh, small funds uh, allocated to the road department. Any further comment or discussion on that? I just appreciate staff getting the answers to those questions. It makes it a little easier to move forward. Yeah. Anything else? Motion and second to approve. The vote is to uh, Commissioner Allen. Yes. 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 All right. Last business item we have on the agenda tonight is to consider a resolution to address environmental concerns of material use. I'm saying material, but it's actually listed as material use of processing of creosote based materials. Uh, each of you has a part of the packet tonight. You have a copy of a draft resolution. And I'll open the floor for a uh, motion to uh, approve, disapprove your, your uh, desire on this, <coughs> this resolution. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the resolution as presented, and with that, I appreciate the effort that's gone into that from the county attorney to, to get us up to get, to get us educated and get us up to speed. I second Thank you. A motion and a second, and for those of you, there were a number of copies that were available in the back of this. We tried to make it available so that you might see that. Uh, uh, of most importance on this was the inability of a county or local government to preempt state act uh, state action on this. However, before the uh, assembly right now is a bill, uh, House Bill 857, that was introduced that would preclude um, the or would prohibit the use of wood products treated with creosote compounds or treated with naphthenate compounds for purposes of commercial electricity generation. So, so that in just is uh, what is included in this resolution. So we have a motion and a second to approve this resolution as presented. Any other comment or question on that? Vote is to Commissioner Strickland. Yes. 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 Very good. Chairman, I will say that Commissioner uh, Kirk sent an email saying he was in support of this as well. So it would be a fine just to let everybody know. Thank you. Thank you. There's no new business. We're going to go through a couple of more items. Um, and before we do this, though, I, I would recognize that tonight, I know we have, uh, as we've been in discussions with uh, our, our city of Danielsville here with respect to um, water and sewer concerns, and while it's not an agenda item, when we get to statements and remarks from citizens, I think I. I I'd uh, highlight to those council members that are here that if you'd like to make a comment or statement, we'd certainly entertain that. And then uh, following that, the commissioners also um, would, you know, please feel free to recognize. But I, I would really, the point I really want to make about this, though, is that this is an emerging uh, proposition and an issue that has arisen. And uh, our meeting tonight is followed by a meeting tomorrow night with our Industrial Development Authority. And much of this would, uh, uh, con uh, would concern or would involve them. So uh, again, it, I just wanted to make mention that uh, we have these opportunities though for those that would like to make any kind of comment, commissioners, citizens alike. So our next item is roads update. Are there any items um, I can share with you that Thursday of this week, we have a crane uh, scheduled that will put back in place planter gunnel road. That will go, that repair will be done to put that back in service. Uh, we're working uh, to, we've got, even after the last round, we've got several other roads that are uh, either impassable or have sinkhole that we're gonna have to address. So. 
this is a, a, an ongoing issue. We did declare a local state of emergency, which allows the county, just for informational purposes here, it allows the county then to be in good stead or in, in a good position should the governor or should a, a larger uh, state of emergency be declared as it relates to weather and damage to roads and things of that nature. Um, our EMA director, our uh, public works director, they're uh, both involved in keeping track of all of the uh, monetary damages and estimates to repair these roads um, for potential reimbursement through uh, GEMA, uh, should that be necessary. And, um, and it does afford us a little bit of opportunity to, to work with property owners, private property owners, should we need to um, go on the property to work around some of these issues. So um, I just wanted to bring up that uh, we are now in the business of uh, restoring and putting back in place those roads. Are there any from the commissioners that uh, would need to be addressed? Jim, I just was uh, talking to Derek, and then you got rooms have been washed out and just let him know that we're all calling him a lot but you know we understand that once it stops raining he'll get moving on this stuff but it's uh everybody else can say a little prayer like you did at the beginning we appreciate it he tells us to petition him by the way <laughs> don't be afraid to ask all right any other comments any other road update no okay urgent matter All right, both statements, remarks. Uh, we'll open the floor here for those that would like to make any comment or any. <clears throat> doesn't have to be on the agenda. It can be about anything. And again, I know and I appreciate that we have uh, folks that have taken time off and have changed their schedules to accommodate this meeting tonight. I would love to have a forum where we could have better prepared for it. But uh, um, as it stands now, this is just a, an opportunity for statements and remarks from citizens on any item. If you would like to do so, we'll entertain that at this time. I, I would like to go first again. My name is Ruth Ann Tasanovich. I live at 959 Highway 172 in Culver. Um, I, I would like to report what I consider a road <coughs> safety hazard caused by some outdoor lights at the Madison GRP biomass plant. There are two very large poles um, with very bright lights <coughs> near the truck sales where the big trucks go in and get weighed. So when I am driving westbound on the westbound lane of Highway 72 at night and I attempt to make a left turn onto the H.P. Chandler Road, like the road that goes for the plant. So when you turn to go across the median, and you have to look the traffic going eastbound, you are blinded by those lights. Because you're, you're turned and you're looking directly at them. And in, in trying to look at the cars coming on 72 and looking there, you cannot even see the roads you're turning on. It's like you're just blinded. And I think it's very dangerous. So um, what I'd like to to do is see if maybe a county official or employee could go evaluate that danger I'm describing and perhaps the lights could be shielded in order to reduce the glare and eliminate the hazard. That would also help, so help with light pollution. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say is I just read today about a two alarm fire at the GRP plant in Carnesville that was just last Thursday afternoon. So that's their second fire. Um, two of Franklin County's volunteer fire departments were called to the plant to fight the fire. And I, I thought about this before and I wanted to voice my concerns for the safety of our volunteer fire departments. When, when I toured that plant in December, I thought, wow, what if there was a fire here, an emergency? The whole place could blow up. It's huge. And, and I would like to know if there's a special emergency response plan for the plant. Um, and the role our volunteer fire departments would play in such an emergency and the EMT staff. So those are my questions. There could be a fire, an explosion. It just seems like it could be a huge emergency and I'm just hoping that we're prepared. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? I used to follow in group dance. <laughs> My name is Drago Savage, I'm at 959 Highway 172 in Culver. Uh, 
I'm here to talk about the resolutions that the MCCPC put to the board, and I sent copies last month to all of you. And uh, I realize it's difficult to get on the agenda at an official board meeting, but when I look at the agenda meeting, I see that as a possibility. We are still hoping to talk to the entire board about these proposals, and I think some of the proposals are really necessary. The bill that's before the House right now, HB 857, will take care of a couple of them, but some of the other ones I think are of utmost importance to our county. So what I'm asking tonight is that maybe at the agenda meeting, you could afford the Madison County Clean Power Coalition the opportunity to discuss these proposals with all the board members, because I think it's to the benefit of every resident of Madison County that you adopt some of these in the future just to protect the county, make the county a better place. So I'm back again. Like I said, some of the proposals have been taken care of and if it's the agenda meeting. We'd be happy to meet you there and talk to you about these proposals there. But I think we deserve, and the citizens that we're speaking for, deserve the opportunity to address the board and get a response. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor of Danielsville, uh, tonight I, I hope all of y'all received the email I sent a couple of days ago. Uh, I know it was short notice, but it, it's an idea that has, has struck us as a uh, medium to use to move forward with the uh, defects office, and that is the proposal of possibly turning over the sewer pond to the county. And that way, with your resources and um, your better avenues of getting uh, grants and funding to improve upon the fund, much better chance than we have. So that's what we have right now. Completely preliminary. No discussion at a meeting has been done yet, but I wanted to bring it to y'all too so y'all could be discussing and get your thoughts on it and feedback. Received that email. I assumed that it made it to everybody. Uh, I didn't see where it went out, to me. And, wanted, and that's why I wanted you to understand that because of the no, and, and it was largely the short notice that uh, uh, we wouldn't have a chance to discuss the right. Or no, I, I perfectly but, understand. The, the other reason we're here is hopefully after the meeting separately. Absolutely. We can all. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask anyone that's here. Myself will be around. Right. It would be wonderful to talk to you. Okay. No. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody else tonight? Okay. We want Terry. All right. We're on to the next item. Statements and remarks from our commissioners. Uh, open the floor for the commissioners to make comments uh, or. Uh, share anything that they have for us tonight too. I just have a question. Gregor, you said you're going to uh, the Capitol this week? Right, it's uh, Conservation Day on Wednesday. Wednesday, I'll be up there Wednesday, so okay. uh, I'll call you and let you know. And both Representative Paul and Tom have told us to get contact with them and talk about this issue in the bill they put before the floor. We'll, so go, we'll go by it on. I'm really pleased about your resolution because we I'll make copies. I'm trying to send it on other representatives tables just to make sure that they're aware that you support them. I'll speak to the city council right there. I personally think that's a step in, in the right direction. And I hope we can do more things jointly like that. And thank y'all for your uh, uh, coming here with this resolution what we went through the other night. I guess <coughs> You know, coming from the county, uh, anything that we can do to enhance our county seat, the better off the whole county will be. Because this is where everybody comes to, and this is where everybody uh, uh, does their business. And I know that's a burden on y'all. And I, you know, I've heard y'all talk about that. You know, being the county seat, you have so many services. And, very little taxes coming back in to take care of that. But we, we do love our county seat. We love Dave. If there's anything we can do to help y'all. Thank you very much. Thank you. And like I said in the, in the email real quick, it is 
we want to see the county move forward. We don't want to prevent it from, but we also want to be good stewards of our sewer system that we have here. But that's it. Thank you. We're all on the same team. We can work together. <laughs> Definitely. And I don't want a bunch of cold medication. I don't know if any of that made sense. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate the citizens that really have been. I mean, your, your input is, um, in, in what we hear from you, we appreciate your passion and we understand. So thank you so much. Coming. Thank you. Meeting after meeting. We're going to change horses and get into a couple of other items. Um, we talked about last week or last month um, about uh, potential department goals and objectives, and I, I want to share. I, uh, and I think I sent these out to y'all, but I guess on, on the record, just want to go ahead and talk about. Um, is there any action items that need to be happening or just a uh, recommendation to follow up with staff or whatnot is uh, talk about employee training records to help educate the citizenry of what you know continuing education is required in some of these positions i think sometimes people don't realize what has to be done to maintain certain certification <coughs> and that also helps you know for better view of training needs for, for budget purposes i mean nothing i'm not trying to get too far in the weeds for, for managing staff it's just how can we help each other make sure that we have what we need and how we can budget for it. Uh, the other thing that I, I truly believe is, is strong in, in my mind that um, I want to pursue some sort of driveway permit application uh, right around. I see several driveways that are going in to me that, that cover the driveway pipe may be undersized or maybe in a poor location due to site visibility. And I think that um, anything attaching to our county right away from a safety consideration ought to be seen by, you know, at least viewed by my proper staff. Uh, not, don't have any details on that, and, you know, I would maybe defer to your staff to see what kind of ideas they have. Um, and the other thing is, uh, I would encourage um, this body to make up the support for the, the IDBNA to, to complete a rate study um, over the next, you know, five, six months to develop what sort of, what kind of mutual benefit can be done to help you with, you know, capital expenses, debt reduction, just the whole process of, of managing the ID, the IDA. And just want to view that as a support as, a, as another body. As another possibly put that on their, their action. <coughs> and that's all I have. Thank you. I believe this is an item to be discussed at, at, at a, an upcoming meeting here too for those, um, whether it's a strategic plan or, or whatever for the, for the uh, IDA too. So, very good. Anything else? Thank you all for coming and for those uh, that uh, would like to stay in chat or whatever. Yeah,